We don't usually think of sovereignty and nationality as something to be bought and sold. We speak of them as innate qualities of a state, backed by natural and firm laws. However, when we look at the history of human development of, with, and in the sea, we start to see a different story emerge. Looking at this history in microcosm through the example of micronations shows an intertwining of the sea with capitalist value production of which many authors have spoken. Campling and Colas outline this relationship through the example of flags of convenience, where vessels are registered, usually to small island states with permissive labour laws and tax regimes, despite not being physically based there. According to Campling and Colas, the outsourcing of nationality in this way turns the vessels and their flags into sovereign spaces of accumulation. They allow for the production of territory, permitting and prioritising the accumulation of capital as mobile sovereign spaces in themselves. This in itself goes to the heart of Cowan's broader arguments on the appropriation of space for resource accumulation. But when it comes to physical territory, not just legal spaces such as ships, this is quite literally the case, as we will see. When nations are created from nothing, they constitute a part of sovereignty that is just as mobile and malleable as the ships that carry flags of convenience, representing a firmer form of what Campling and Colas term terraqueous territorialities, and becoming, in the end, nations of convenience. Micronations are these nations of convenience, which effectively capitalise on the same qualities of mobility and positionality as flags of convenience. According to Vitalio, rather than being normal countries proclaimed by a sovereign people, micronations are tiny areas over which usually an individual or small group claim sovereignty, but which are not recognised by other sovereign states or international organisations. While there is a huge range of literature focusing on sovereignty, almost none exists on micronations, which are usually overlooked when considering the uses and abuses of sovereignty and borders. While many micronations exist on land, our focus here will be on one of the many that have existed on or in the seas, a position that especially highlights their varied and terraqueous nature. We will therefore take the example of the Republic of Minerva. The Minerva reefs are a group of atolls, the north one of which is shown here, south of Fiji and Tonga in the South Pacific Ocean, sitting just below the waves, and before 1972 were completely unclaimed. Sitting below the high tide mark, they failed to even reach the definition of, of an island that could be claimed. In 1972, Las Vegas real estate millionaire Michael Oliver set out to create a utopic, libertarian society, free of taxes, welfare or government intervention, and protected from the oversight of pesky national legal agencies. Sand, brought on barges from Australia, was dumped on the reefs and a small platform was constructed with the flag of the newly proclaimed Republic of Minerva raised by freshly elected President Morris Davis. Passports and even coins were produced for the new nation's citizens, and a declaration of independence sent to regional Pacific states. Yet this was no normal country. The citizens were not residents in their home, but essentially investors in a venture capital project selling not a product, but sovereignty and nationality itself. The Declaration of Independence was considered a serious regional issue and a threat to the sovereignty of established regional states who feared an influx of entrepreneurs establishing nations of convenience on their doorsteps across the many low-lying islands and reefs of the South Pacific. Tonga launched a counterclaim to the Minerva Reefs that was immediately recognised by either regional states at a meeting of the South Pacific Forum called shortly after the Declaration of the Republic of Minerva. A military force was assembled to enforce the Tongan claim, and their flag was promptly raised above Minerva in place of that of the abortive republic. A second attempt to re-establish the republic in 1983 similarly ended in a military takeover by Tongan troops. Alone, this episode seems a quaint, ultimately inconsequential event. Yet even minor quirks of sovereignty can have significant impacts. Tonga's territorial claim would in fact lead to a seabed dispute with Fiji beginning in 2005. What is more important, however, is what the event reveals about the nature, treatment and commodification of sovereignty, which as Camping and Colas point out, happens at a global scale, but which can be examined in detail in microcosm in this instance. Michael Oliver was not working alone. 
He was backed by the resources of the extreme right-wing libertarian Phoenix Foundation, which he had helped found along with a number of extremely wealthy individuals. The Phoenix Foundation continued to pursue a project of establishing a viable state, seeking to establish micronations in the Abaco Islands and the Bahamas and Vanuatu, even after the end of the Republic of Minerva. But what interest does an American libertarian organization have funding insurrections in the Pacific? The example of the Republic of Minerva reveals a group taking advantage of island imaginaries and the convenience of isolation in an attempt to capitalize on them for profit in an open season of profiteering. One of the primary planned income sources for Minerva, other than being a tax haven for the wealthy, was in fact to be the use of its flag as a flag of convenience, in a controlled, outsourced form of the usual forms of flags of convenience. Yet while the establishing of micronations such as Minerva may seem insidious, in many ways it is little different to the actions of established states in how they manipulate sovereignty. The Minerva reefs were unclaimed islets before they were raised for essentially imperialist claims for private benefit through territorial expansion. Little different to Chinese island building on the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea. The response of a Tongan prince to Minerva's establishment that, quote, we can't have people setting up empires on our doorstep, unquote, therefore seems somewhat ironic given the history of imperial and colonial expansion across the Pacific. The Republic of Minerva thus is most useful as a means of examining why and how sovereignty and territory at sea is and can be manipulated in such ways. Perhaps most obviously, it represented an opportunity to escape legal state jurisdictions from what was viewed as oppressive government by its founders. Yet the Republic was not founded by the oppressed or the stateless, but instead those who have profited most from the existing capitalist system, including Oliver's business partner, Harry Schultz, at one time the world's highest paid investment consultant. Similarly, in modern times, major proponents of seasteading have included the billionaire owner of PayPal, Peter Thiel, seen here. Many aspects of the history of the Republic of Minerva have parallels in the growing movement of seasteading amongst the wealthy. Once seen as a vain contingency plan, many wealthy individuals have retreated to private islands and vessels to wait out the current pandemic, reaping the benefits of privately owned isolation. Though these ventures appear to be an escape from authority towards freedom, they are more an expression of the concentration of power and wealth in small groups of individuals, seeking to harness the advantages of sovereignty to exert their own authority. Cathari and Wilkinson's island imaginaries play an important role here, but rather than dispelling colonial conquest, in this case, they in fact facilitate and perpetuate colonial goals and actions. It is also an instance of Leinbohr and Redeker's superlucration in action, the creation of surplus value through force. For Leinbohr and Redeker, development is always driven from somewhere and someone, in this case very explicitly so in the figurative and literal attempt to create an island and a country. Violence is often employed in such cases, as it has been by the Phoenix Foundation in confrontations with Tuvalu, and even armed conflict in their similar attempt in Vanuatu. In short, micronations at sea reveal an intertwining of nationality with capitalism, co-opting the significance of the state to pursue profit and individual gain, rather than social outcomes. Thus, rather than being purely neoliberal and post-national movements, they in fact underline the importance of the state as a controller of authority and regulation at sea, which is required even when apparently escaping these very same things.